I was hoping you'd be able to deliver a dish to my granddaughter's birthday party. It's my specialty, herring and pumpkin pot pie. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. And today, I'm going to be making the pumpkin and herring pie from Kiki's Delivery Service. This is smoked herring. It smells weird. So, to make that beautiful decoration that goes on top of the pie, I'm going to be making puff pastry from scratch, which starts by combining 20 ounces of all-purpose flour, half an ounce of kosher salt, four soft ounces of unsalted butter, while slowly adding in 10 ounces of cold water. And once the dough is a bit craggly or shaggy in texture, it goes onto a well-floured work surface to begin shaping. I might sound like I know what I'm doing, but this is actually my first time making puff pastry ever. So Kendall, our amazing kitchen producer, is guiding me through every single step. So what I'm doing here is rolling out the dough into a rough rectangle, folding it over into another rectangle, and punching it down with the rolling pin slowly. And the goal here is to really get a clean rectangular shape with constant rolling and folding. Off screen, Kendall is silently giving me instructions and nods of approval and nods of disappointment when things don't go well. I'm quite used to it because, well, I'm Asian. Anyways, after a little bit of rolling and shaping with a bench scraper, the butter inside the dough is starting to get a little warm and soft, so it does need to go on a board inside the fridge so that I can set up nicely. And while we wait, it's time to make the coveted big butter block. I think this is the heart and soul of any good puff pastry. So what I'm doing is fusing blocks of butter together by pounding it really hard with my rolling pin. And when it gets a little bit too big to handle, I fold it back in on itself so I can pound it again. And it's so fun. You can feel the butter getting softer and more flexible under you after each pound, after each roll, after each fold. And the goal is to slowly coax it into a shape of a rectangle slightly smaller than half of the pastry. So this way, it'll fit nice and snug when the time comes. After about 10 minutes in the fridge, it is now time for the butter and the pastry to get married. First, I'm flouring the pastry, and after rolling it out gently, I'm pressing it down the midsection to create the fold line. That's where the butter block's gonna go. It's kind of like a butter sandwich, almost like a pop tart or a hot pocket or lean pocket if your parents cared about health like mine did. But I'm carefully using the rolling pin to get it rolled out. And now we finally get to begin the laborious but beautiful process of creating those hundreds of magnificent layers. It's actually pretty important to brush this down with each fold so that the excess flour doesn't prevent our layers from sticking together. So here's the breakdown. I started with a four fold, rested that for 30 minutes in the fridge, a three fold, another 30 minutes in the fridge, another four fold, 30 minutes, and a final three fold and 30 more minutes, creating a total of 144 layers. I'd like you all to meet my very first baby. His name is Bob and I'm going to put my baby in the fridge now. So after my lunch break, I decided to take on the pumpkin part for this recipe. This is actually kabocha squash, which in Chinese translates to langua, which in English translates back into pumpkin. And that's what I grew up with, so I'm using it. I decided to interpret the pumpkin and herring pie as a pot pie filling. So I'm cutting up some leeks, some celery, some fennel, and I just thought it'd be fun to do a little bit. Oh, nice catch there, dude. For the fennel, I made sure I took out the little bit of that hard triangular root near the base so it's easier to dice it up. Also, I did just get a new knife, so this was the perfect excuse to just chop a bunch of stuff up and feel really cool. And to cook the squash, I've placed a steamer attachment inside a pot filled with boiling water, steaming them for about 15 minutes or so until they show no resistance when stabbed, just like me. Now that they're done, these just hang out to the side and cool off. Well, we can't have a pumpkin and herring pie without herring. So after donning some protective measures, I'm carefully just tearing this into chunks. I do want to be able to have some of that texture 
in the final pie, but yeah, make sure you wash your hands after this. Now that the kabocha squash has cooled, we have to take the skins off. So taking a small petty knife, almost cutting it like a watermelon in the way that you kind of take the skins off so that we're left with those nice, soft, but still relatively firm chunks. And finally, it's time to cook the pot pie filling. So we're starting off with some butter, followed by the leeks that washed in cold water and the rest of the vegetables that we had cut earlier. Really not trying to get these too cooked, but we definitely want to get a little bit of this color on the celery. And at this point, I'm adding six tablespoons of flour to coat all the vegetables evenly before adding the liquids, first of which is milk. And I'm slowly stirring it in to prevent clumping. This gives the pot pie filling that creamy texture that everybody likes. And then I thought it'd be fitting to use fish stock instead of chicken stock, because this is a pumpkin and herring pie. And now the most interesting part that I was looking forward to, putting in the herring itself and adding in some sage and rosemary that'll fresh things up a bit, hopefully lift the fish up and some salt, some black pepper and the pumpkin and herring filling is officially ready meaning it's time to slide Bob aggressively onto the table and prepare him for one last beating. We'll start by flouring the surface and dividing the dough in half. Gotta pause real quick to admire all those beautiful layers we made. Then, to roll out the pastry evenly, press the rolling pin down equally across the dough before going in and rolling it out to be a little larger than the cooking vessel I'm using. And I'm then using the lid to sort of mark where I need to cut. That way, I get a perfect shape every time. If I recall correctly, the pie from Kiki's Delivery Service has a fish on it, has a couple of stripes, so I'm cutting out the pastry to try and get those shapes as close to the film version as much as possible. Shout out to my new knife. This is my third one so far this week. I've gone down quite a rabbit hole. Someone please get me out. This is a fish. This is me trying to figure out how large the eyeball should be. I'm gonna go to Google Images real quick, I'll be right back. So now, in a medium casserole dish, I'm spooning in the pumpkin and herring pie filling. I don't want the puff pastry to rise unevenly, so I'm trying to make sure that the filling is as smooth and as clean as possible. It's also pretty important that the pastry goes on a room temperature or cold filling so that it doesn't melt and change while it's in the oven. Using a little bit of egg wash not only helps me stick on the other strips of pastry, but it also helps promote a nice golden brown look once it comes out of the oven. And finally, I get to place on my fish. So I'm being very careful not to disturb the other pastry strips that I've tried to put on, using egg wash as the glue and reassembling this fish's face. Hey, not bad if I do say so myself for a first time. Some steam vents to allow the steam to escape. Some olives in. There we have it. Into a hot 400 degree oven you go. 45 minutes later, looks like my fish tried to escape. So we're gonna give it a little bit of time to deflate and cool before I dive in and give myself a huge serving. The pastry has a nice crackly sound to it and the filling honestly looks really delicious. Let's see. First, you gotta give it that little Hmm. The pastry is golden and buttery and delicious. The filling is warm and comforting. And I think it's a perfect meal to deliver to a grandkid or a friend. I just wish this little guy could talk so he could tell me how much he likes it. I like you, little guy.